how to not gain the weight back after you have lost a significant amount of weight, maybe 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. We've all been there to where we've dropped some uh, significant amount of weight, been really happy with ourselves, and then life starts to happen. And whether it's slow or all at once, the weight comes right back. If that's you and you're trying to avoid that, this video is for you. My name is Patrick Bell. I am the founder of Kingdom Health. I work with athletes and regular people, helping them to get out of pain, get stronger, and see them walk in purpose. A lot of what I do inside of that is helping people to, um, you know, lose some body fat to help them, you know, reduce inflammation, to get out of pain, uh, just simply assist them, you know, as they're wanting to change their body. Um, I do believe that, you know, oftentimes God will walk you through a process of fat loss or walk you through a process of bulking to um, you know, help you have a deeper love and appreciation for your body and understanding of how it works too. I think we should love our body before the weight loss ever happens. Um, love our body like Jesus loves us. But you know, um, sometimes the process ends up teaching us what uh, some of the morals and grounding that we should have had in the beginning. But that's another conversation for another day. Uh, today's conversation is on how to make sure that if you lose a pretty good amount of weight, that you don't gain it back. So this is really common for a lot of people, especially when you go on the more extreme side of dieting to where you cut your calories really low. Uh, maybe you do a really restrictive form of eating. You go into like an elimination diet, something like um, carnivore, uh, veganism, ketogenic diets, um, extreme fasting as well, where people um, you know, just cut out all food together for a long period of time. And I'm a big fan of all of those, actually. I think every single one of those elimination diets or fasting protocols I mentioned has a valuable purpose, but sometimes people can take it a little bit too extreme. They cut their calories too low for too long and their metabolism starts to get trashed. And so this is where we get into a place to where you've lost the weight, but now it's really easy to gain it right back. So here's what you're going to want to do. Number one, is while you're actually losing body fat, you don't wanna cut your calories too low. Uh, my first piece of advice is try not to do the super extreme fat loss methods where it's super fast um, and in my opinion, kind of sloppy, right? Like if you're losing 100 pounds in, in 90 days, I don't know, like that's just, some people can do it and have done, like there's the whole David Goggins route. I know other people who have done this, but for the average Joe, like, let's just, I'll be honest, David Goggins is not your average Joe. <laughs> but for your average person, super fast weight loss doesn't actually teach you a lot of the principles and foundations you need to, you know, keep the weight off. It just teaches you how to starve. It teaches you how to drastically limit your calories. So instead of that, I really recommend for most people, do a slower calorie deficit. Try to only lose weight at a rate of like one to two pounds a week. That's uh, if you're heavier set, you can start to get into like one percent of your overall body weight. So if you're like 300 pounds and you're dropping, you know, three pounds a week. If you're 400, 500 pounds, you're dropping four or five pounds a week. That's normal. You can drop 20 pounds, you know, in a month if you weigh 500 pounds or 400 pounds. That's not like that's actually not too big of a concern right there. But if you are, you know, in the the 200 pound range or 100s. One to two pounds a week is gonna be a lot more sustainable. So first and foremost is don't lose it too quickly. It's really easy to gain the weight back if you lose it too quickly. So a rate of one to two pounds a week, really helpful there. Um, a calorie deficit of only about 500 calories on average a day or 3,500 calories a week will put you at about one pound of weight loss each uh, week. So, you know, bumping that up. One tool I really love is a full day water fast every week. Um, that'll, you know, help to steepen that. It might put you at that one and a half, two pounds um, of uh, weight loss each week, even though you're only at a 500 calorie deficit on the other days. So there's, there's different ways that you can go about this, but number one, don't lose the weight too quickly. All right make sure that you're actually eating adequate calories. Like an actual toddler, it takes them at least 1,200 to 1,400 calories just to live, you know, and just to survive. So when I see somebody say that they're on a 1,000 calorie a day diet, it's like, dude, a little toddler eats more food than you every day. Like that doesn't seem right to me, size comparison wise, age wise, all of that. So I'm definitely a fan of eating a little bit more calories. Like if you can lose weight at 1,200 calories or you could lose weight at 1,600 calories, I'd say let's go to the 16. 
if you could lose weight at 2,000 calories or you could lose weight at you know 2,300 calories, I'd say let's go for the 2,300 and just go a little bit more moderate with it. Um, especially if you're working out at the same time, your workouts are going to go better and feel better when you have a little bit more nourishment in there. There is a time for those steep cuts and getting a little bit deeper into the fat loss speed, but I think a lot of people mess up and go too quick there. Second is, all right, you've lost the weight, 20 pounds down, 30 pounds down, 50 pounds down, 100 pounds down. I like to stop most people and get them reflecting once they've lost like 10 to 15% of your overall body weight. So if you were 250 pounds and you've lost like, let's put that at 15%. So let's just call that a smooth like 35 to 40 pounds. If you've lost 35 to 40 pounds, and this range can even go 10 to 20% of your overall body weight now that I, I'm, I'm thinking about it and feeling it out a little bit more. So let's say you're 250 pounds and you've dropped 25 to 50 pounds. It's a good time in that arena to take a pause and do something I call the set point protocol. I am not the inventor of this. Um, I think I first heard about this from Renaissance uh, Diet, uh, the book, and it helped phenomenally for myself and for everybody. So what this is, is once you've lost 10 to 20% of your overall body weight, you'll kind of have a feeling where you start to plateau a little bit or it's not as easy as it used to be. What I recommend for people to do here is to take some time and it's going to be uncomfortable, like four to 12 weeks. Honestly, six to 12 weeks is going to be a little bit of a better timeline. So six to 12 weeks where you actually increase your overall calories and consumption. Now, why are you doing this? Well, what happens is if you stay in a calorie deficit and you're losing fat for too long, your body's metabolism will start to just shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. And, shrink. and eventually you get to this point to where like you're kind of faced with this decision. If you want to if you've already lost some weight and you want to keep losing weight, you have to just slash your calories or do more cardio. But you hit a certain point to where it's like, all right, I'm already doing cardio five days a week. I'm walking like 30, 60 minutes every single day, whatever it might be. And then my calories are already at like a thousand calorie deficit. And, and so if I increase that, it's like I'm at a 1500 calorie deficit um, and I'm walking five or six days a week for an hour and I'm working out three or four days a week. It's like, dude... My life doesn't revolve around working out. I can't actually like maintain this type of thing. Um, and, and a lot of people can't. It's not you. It's not, not that you're the issue. It's that the system is the issue. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you can only do more cardio and cut your calories so much to where it's just not maintainable. So instead of doing that and going to the deeper depths of like calorie deficit hell and feeling, feeling terrible because your energy is going to be low, your libido is going to be low, um, you're not going to you know, be fun to be around, uh, you know, you're going to be hangry all the time. Instead, what I recommend you do is take 6 to 12 weeks and actually bump up your calories by like 500, 800 calories. It just depends on how much of a calorie deficit you're in. Truthfully, just go like in a 1 to 300 calorie surplus, real small nothing crazy, like one to 200 calorie surplus, honestly. And so that means like if you were losing two pounds a week eating 1600 calories a day, you got from like 200 pounds down to 165. You know, what you want to do is increase your calories to where if you were losing like two pounds a, a week, that means you're probably in a thousand calorie deficit. So like go from 1600 calories to like 2400 calories, but you're not going to do this right away. What you're going to do is week by week, add about an extra 200 calories, okay? So week one, if you were at 1,600 calories, losing weight, you hit your goal body weight, or at least you drop 10 to 20% and you're hitting a plateau, you say, okay, week two, week one of this new set point protocol, I'm going to go to 1,800 calories, eat about average of that, you know, my daily average should be that by the end of the week, and I'm going to, you know do that by adding in a little bit more carbs or adding in a little bit more protein, a little bit more fats. It doesn't really matter. Carbs are probably going to help you, especially in your workout. So add back in a little bit more calories, 200 calories, and then check your average weight. Are you gaining weight or are you maintaining? If you're maintaining within a five to eight pound like ballpark, you're doing great. Stay there. And now increase the next week calories by another one to 200 calories. So now you're going from 1800 to 1,900 to 2,000 ish. Have a you know have a ballpark there, and increase those calories a little bit. Or no, keep those calories there. Check your average weigh in. Weigh yourself like three times a week, and see okay 
Am I staying within a five to eight pound like ballpark of my weight? All right, I am. Okay, cool. You got to just stay in the pocket. Does that make sense? Like if your weight goes up five pounds, that's normal in a day. If your weight even goes up eight pounds, that's normal to have in a day, especially if you're a woman, your cycle can impact your, your weight, um, you know, perimenopause, premenopause, postmenopause, all these things can affect it. Um, and both genders, you know, just food, and did you poop, water, <laughs> all this stuff, salt, it impacts uh, your weight. Were you fasting? Or are you not fasting? So check your average weekly weigh in, weigh yourself like three times. Don't just like say, oh man, I, I gained too much weight on this one day. Like check it through the week. Make sure you're staying in that five to eight pound pocket, either under or above your, your original uh, low weigh in. I mean, every single week, if you're maintaining on average around the same weight, keep increasing your calories by one to 200 until you start to feel what's called the spillover effect to where you're like, oh man, I've, I've left the pocket and now I'm actually like 10 pounds heavier than my lowest weigh in. That is totally okay. Totally okay. You remember how easy it was for you to drop the 30 pounds in the first place? You can do it again, but let yourself maintain there. And while you're doing this, work out hard. What I mean by that is let this be a time to where your calories are increasing. You're using those increased calories to get better workouts. That's why I said carbs are a great way to fuel. Carbs and protein are a great way to fuel these extra calories coming back into your diet. But as you're building up, you know, by 500 to 1,000 more calories, bringing yourself from a deficit into a nice maintenance and then a very, very small surplus, like one to 200 calories, you are using all of that energy in your workout. So you're, if you're doing cardio, you're, you know, you're increasing your speed, you're increasing your distance. If you're doing a lot of strength training, what you're doing at that time is you are you know, ramping up the weights a little bit more. You're doing a couple more sets. You're doing a little bit more reps. Just basically trying to beat what you did the week beforehand and get a little bit better at it because these extra calories are now fuel for the machine. So this isn't just a, let me get fat and lazy time. This is a, all right, these extra calories need to go somewhere, so I'm gonna make sure that they're fueling really great workouts. So now your goals shift from the scale going down to let me have a killer workout. Let me like, let me fuel this workout really good. I'm gonna have like, you know, two extra bananas today because I'm at a 200 calorie increase from the week beforehand. And so like, I'm gonna have one before the workout and one like after the workout. Just see how I feel with, with sandwiching carbohydrates around my workout period, you know, that weren't there beforehand. All right, I feel amazing, this is really good. I got five pounds more on my squat this week than I did the week beforehand. That's what it's all about. With a set point protocol, your focus is to get stronger, shift your focus from the scale into uh, better performance in your workouts, maintaining the same ballpark of weight, stay in the pocket. Five to eight pounds is totally normal to shift up or down while increasing your calories every week for six to 12 weeks by one to 200 calories. Once you reach the place where you start to spill over and you say, all right, I'm gaining more than I would like, or actually let me rephrase it more than what Patrick said, because to be honest, you might not like even gaining two pounds, but I'm just gonna tell you to trust the process. <laughs> um, but once you like get out of that pocket, you start to get to like the 174 mark. 175 in this example being 165 then you say okay now it's time to get ready because i'm going to go back into another phase of fat loss and guess what you already know how to do fat loss because you've already lost a lot of weight but now what happens is when you make this set point protocol what you are doing is you are planting, I wish I would have said this earlier because this is really important. You are planting your flag in the ground and saying, this is my new happy weight. What happens when you take the time to rebuild your metabolism is now your body says, okay, cool. Like 165 is, or 165 to 170 is our happy place. It's a like, it's like, imagine you're climbing Mount Everest and you have to have base camps every like few thousand feet of elevation. Otherwise, you you start to um, you know not acclimate to the to the um, elevation very well. You can't go super high, super quick. Every couple thousand feet, you have to set up base camp and stay there for one to two days. So your body can you know adapt to the level of oxygen at that level. It's the same thing with fat loss. If you go too deep, your body's going to say, "Whew, that starvation phase was." was great, glad to, glad we are done with that. Let's balloon back up to the 200 pounds. Rather than staying at 165, it's saying, all right, cool, let's go back to like 200 or wherever it was that you started. Where instead, if you say, no, 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 we're gonna go slowly by slowly, increase one to 200 calories a week until we build back up for six to 12 weeks, and I'm just gonna camp 
here at this weight, now 165 to 170 is your happy place. It's going to be hard to leave that weight. It's going to, your body, like you can fight, you can do a lot of stuff. It's going to be hard for you to get higher than that. So what you're doing is you're efficient, you're, you know, you're essentially setting up boundaries on each side of your weight loss to say, Hey, I'm no longer going back up to 200 pounds. It's going to be really hard for you to, for you to do that because now you can eat more calories and it's still at maintenance for you. You see what I mean? Like you've built up your metabolism. So now then when you go into your next phase of fat loss, your calories won't actually have to be as low as they were beforehand too, because your metabolism, you spent time building more muscle in this phase by getting in better workouts and increasing your calories. So now you're burning more calories every day and your maintenance calories is higher. So you won't have to cut your calories as low to go into this next phase of weight loss. So it's a win-win all around. You're going to be able to maintain your weight easier. You won't have to dig into as low of calories and you won't have to worry about regaining the weight back. So this set point protocol will change everything that you do in your weight loss journey. Don't skip it. Don't be in such an excited journey to go drop the next 20 that you forget your set point protocol. Every 10 to 20% of your overall body weight that you lose, you should be doing this. If you're starting off at 350, you should do this once you've lost like 70 pounds. Do it at, do it at like um, you know 280. And then once you get from 280 to 230, 220, do it again and maintain it. And then at 220, it's like, let's say you get to 195, you lost another 10%, do it again. All right. The leaner you get, the more often you're going to need to do this. Um, so if this was helpful for you, leave a comment, let me know something you learned here. Um, but this will change your entire fat loss journey. So this is my Ted talk on how to lose weight without, <laughs> without, uh, gaining it right back. If this was helpful for you guys too, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, every single person here who does that, I really appreciate you guys. We just crossed a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. So Really thankful for that. Thankful for each and every single one of you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.